hope you're all doing well. My computer is being very stubborn, like an old goat, like me. So I decided I was gonna make you a new scone recipe using leftover pulp. I just made Erica some delicious blueberry jam. And I'm gonna show you the texture of this jam because it's so good. And I'll make you a video on that too. Look at this beautiful blueberry mm -mm, goodness. So she asked me if I would make her some scones so she could put some on there. And I said to her, yes, I would. So since I have leftover pulp, I'm gonna show you how easy it is for you to combine some of the pulp into a recipe. Now, how much pulp do I have? I have the pulp that when I make my milk. Now you say, how much pulp? Well, whatever pulp you have, just throw it in to this recipe. It will come out delicious. If you hang tight, there will be a recipe on my milk. All right. Okay, let me create my oven. Temperature wise is always the same when it comes to my scones. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a crepe cast iron pan to make my to put my scones on. And here we go. Let's start. So always 425 when I'm making my scones, but that's my oven guy. Somebody asked me why do you use that temperature? Well, that's how my oven works. Maybe your oven is stronger than mine, so maybe you don't need to put it at 425. Maybe you have to put yours at 400, or maybe yours is weaker than mine, and you might have to jack that up. So play it by ear. When you make your first batch, just start noticing. Keep an eye on it. That's why I cook half and half. I start at 425 for 15 minutes, then I lower mine to 400 for another 15 minutes. Check it out. If you see it's getting too golden, in those first 15 minutes then lower your heat next time instead of doing 425 do 400 and if you see you still need a little more golden then the balance just jack it up a little maybe only five degrees more maybe 10 degrees more so you're gonna have to check how your oven works for you i could tell you what i do with mine but really in reality you got to see how you're gonna do yours okay so we're gonna start off with my pulp and this is just a great way that you don't waste food guys now you can make crackers with this so many recipes you can add your pulp to but my daughter was craving scones she's gonna get pulp in her scones does doesn't always sound right when I say it but yeah that's how we're gonna do it. It's gonna be slightly different the texture, but still delicious. When I say delicious, delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna pretty much make these not as extravagant. I'm not gonna add raisins to it because we are gonna be using some blueberry jam on top. Delicious. Okay, so here we go. To this, we're gonna add some flour. Now, you're going to get a bigger batch of scones because you've got all that pulp. I'm going to put one of these scoops in my one cup. And it looks like the way I fill it up, it's just a little over half a cup. So we've got one, another. So we're probably going to use about this is going to be like three three quarter cups so that comes to what two and a half erica what does it come to three times three quarter cups two and a quarter, two and a quarter. okay so two and a quarter two and a half we're going to just put a little extra because i never measure anything so there you go it's about two and a half cups don't be afraid to Play around with food, guys. What's the worst that can happen? It fails on you? No matter how much it fails, nothing gets wasted in my house. Even if my cakes don't come out as special or how I intend it to come out, uh, my husband is such a sweet tooth that he tells me, Connie, it's delicious, and he'll eat it. So I'm not worried. I mean, 
it's food, right? Maybe it's not as fluffy. Maybe it's not as, you know, firm. It's food. It's going to be good. Especially if it has sugar in it, which I'm going to add just a little bit. Not too much because we want this more of a saltier scone, not too much of a sweet scone. I have a recipe on a sweet scone, but this is going to be delicious. As you can see, I'm just breaking down the bigger pieces of my pulp. There we go. Perfect. One, two, three. Now we're going to add some baking soda. And you know my recipe, right? It's about a tablespoon of baking soda. There you go. I don't measure, guys. I eyeball, but it is a tablespoon. Okay. And we're going to mix that up. Just give it a good mix. So it gets incorporated everywhere. And I can find another little lump. And we're going to get a nice, big, fat scone. Okay, we're going to add some salt. Okay. Here we go. We're going to add a little sugar. Just a little because we want this to be more savory, like I said. And what would this be? Let me see. How about an eighth of a cup? Now, remember, this is my recipe. If you want your sweet, just add extra sugar. Okay. There we go. Okay, so keep your flour near you because you're going to need it. Now we're going to add our fat. The magic of scones is adding fat. You want to be able to make these nice and fluffy. Okay, we're going to end up using more coconut this time around, but usually I do three heaping, you see that, uh, vegan basil, and then I do three coconut, but because, because my daughter's going to probably want some with her scones, I'm going to do two, and the rest will be coconut this time around. Gotta compromise sometimes. You know, there's times you want to make something and you don't have the ingredient at, the ingredients that you need at home. Okay, so here's one. Yes. Two. Maybe I'll use less this time. Let's see. Three. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try just this. We need extra fat. You know what? I think they're going to come out just as good, even if I use less. Okay, so we're going to slowly just crumble this in. mess of everything like usual yeah maybe a bigger bowl would have been better but what's a challenge right sometimes you just gotta have that challenge okay you could even use your hands if you want mine are clean don't freak I'm always trying to explain myself here. Okay. And remember guys, I'm used to making this stuff so I know my textures. But if you've never made scones before, your best bet 
is to refrigerate uh, your coconut oil for a little bit just to get it nice and cold um, and your margarine you might want to your vegan basil you might want to put that in the freezer for just a little bit just to get it nice and cold so you get that nice crumble throughout your flour but you know if you want to chance it like I do then just use it right out of the fridge or right out of the pantry because coconut oil is always in a more solid as you can tell you see mine it's not liquid I could put this upside down and I'm using virgin coconut oil because I find that gives the most delicious um, buttery flavor to your scones without having to use butter being vegan we don't use butter right okay so boom there you go okay so now we're gonna add a little bit of milk and I'm gonna tell you how much I'm using in this batch but you'll see uh, you don't want these super soggy and you don't want this super firm you want to be able to just put this stuff together without making it fall apart so we're gonna start off with this is a quarter cup we're gonna start off with a quarter cup and if we need more we'll add a little more because I have way more ingredients in here I might need that little extra liquid and as you can see I'm gonna need more because I can feel it's still floury in this batch but if you're gonna follow my milk recipe then you're gonna have the right amount to use okay so we're gonna go for remember less is always more so I'm gonna put an eight so that's half of this and if I need more I will add more so that's a quarter plus an eight. And I might need just a little extra. Because I have such a large amount of stuff. Okay, so we're going to do that other eight. So that's two quarters, which gives you half a cup of delicious vegan milk and now I can see my dough is coming together perfecto see you want it to come together but you don't want to over process this so you kind of lightly fold it in see perfect I could have even used that extra fat but you know we're always watching our butt in okay need space so you didn't want any anything in your Erica like uh, some lavender flowers or it's up to you speak now hey eh? you're good with plain okay all right my counter is clean whatever you see here is because I dropped it from my bowl there we go and we're gonna sprinkle of course some flour because we're gonna dump this right onto our counter okay now I want you to see how it fell apart all crumbly it's not like a very wet or over mixed product and that's the trick of a good scone now you're gonna kind of push it together because the more you mix this the more you're gonna mess it up because you want to leave all that fat to make fatty pockets so we're gonna mix it once one two have you noticed how I'm doing it I'm just kind of pressing it together you don't want to overdo it guys we're gonna form some kind of a disc here ok 
Okay, just give it one more shot. Boom. I know you're going to say, but that looks ugly. Well, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Now, notice the folds. You see how this isn't completely attached to itself? That's what you're looking for. And yes, you might not get everything in, but you can open some of those folds and just tuck it. There you go. Okay, I'm going to get some paper so my cast iron pan doesn't have anything stuck to the bottom of it. Give me a second. I'm just going to push this over to the side. There we go. Now, I get a lot of people saying, Connie, where do you get your beautiful paper? Isn't it beautiful? It says vegetables. See that? Vegetables are beautiful. I love it. I get this down at Obu. That's a place near Atwater Market. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's St. Ambrose Street Road. You can miss it. Uh, look it up. That's if you're, in your, if you're in Montreal. If not, go on to Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link for you. And there's different styles, but it is the same type of paper. Just it doesn't say vegetables on it. It doesn't say legume or vegetables on it. Okay, so I'm doing this because I don't want... Did I just do that? Yes, I did. What a dodo bird. I'm supposed to put my cast iron pan on there. You see, I'm so busy explaining something to you that I'm not even realizing what I'm doing. Okay, let's clean that off. Sometimes the brain doesn't function. Okay, so we want to pick this up and place it on top. Now we want to press this down. Don't overpress, don't put too much force on it. But you want to get it down to about maybe an inch high. And if it's not super round, it doesn't matter. You could even make this square if you want. Let's try making a square this time. Let me get my spatula. Oh, here it is. Okay. There we go. So we're going to try and get this square. Size doesn't matter. Shape doesn't matter either. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. We're not perfect. Okay. That should be good. Press it down. It's as square as I'm going to get it right now. Maybe I should have shaped this square before I... Okay, it's good. So we're going to go smack in the middle. And why do I do this? Someone says, why don't you do that at the end? Well, because if I do this now, it's just going to be easier. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to do little scones because Erica can have two and I'll have just one. That's that middle. Jeez, if that's the worst, they're not even perfect. You see, nothing's perfect. <laughs> okay, we're going to go this way and this way. Okay. There you go. Not the prettiest shape, but who cares? That's what I say. Who cares? Okay. Perfect. Perfect in my eyes. Now, because the jam is so sweet, I am going to sprinkle smoked salt on this. First, I'm going to do just a sprinkle of flour. Gives it more of that bakery look. There we go. And now we're going to sprinkle one of my favorites. It's called Maldon Smoked Salt. And what's beautiful about this salt, that is, keeps its shape even after 
it touches any surface. They're like little diamonds. And once that butter releases, it's going to stick on even more. Good. You could always add more later. Okay, and now we're going to put just a tad of sugar. Just a little. Just so you get that boom in your mouth. All right, guys, this is going to the oven. Remember, 425, halfway through, that's 15 minutes. I lower it and I put it for another 15 minutes. So I'll show you what they look like when they come out of the oven. Timer one five. Okay, see you in a bit, guys. <laughs> Stones, eh? Okay, guys. Like my daughter would say, what is that witchery, mother? Well, um, how beautiful are they? See now why I cut them ahead of time? Now, you can lift this up and just crack it with your hands, or you could go back and get this cut. Boom, right there, right there. Oh, I'm not gonna cut those. We'll leave some attached. Voila, beautiful, yes. Okay, let me put this aside. Now you see why I cut them. If you're gonna serve this, you're gonna serve them when they're just a little cooler. You could grab the whole piece. They could just come here and lift it up and just break it off themselves. So that's why I cut it ahead of time, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna push this over to the side. And we're gonna put our beautiful plate. I'm gonna serve it to my daughter. Might as well make it pretty, right? Ta-dum, ta-dum, ta-dum. And we're gonna give her the nicest one. Okay, I just want you to look at it. Do you see that? Do you see that? Look at that. There we go. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna let it cool off just a little bit. And she's gonna have, put this over. A delicious scone. There you go, guys. What did that take? It took half an hour, really. You just threw some ingredients together. And like my daughter would say, magic. There you go. Remember, always put love and intention in your food. And it's always going to taste spectacular. So I'm going to say, I love you. I'm going to say thank you for always showing up on my channel, even though I like to talk a lot. And guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in my next video. Erica, mm -hmm. would you like to try it? Mm hmm. Do you see the steam? <laughs> I'm a bit clumsy. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm. Is it good? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You always tell me it's good. Give me this a piece. This is very good. Here. Let me take a piece. Look That's at that. very good. Now this is made with our delicious. Just by using leftover pop guys. There you go. Deliciousness. Mm -mm -mm. That jam is very good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, it is good. <laughs> Dangerous. Guys, when you make it, only have one. 
it is dangerous. Oh, Lord. All right, guys. I love you. And guess what? I'm going to see you soon. Mm-hmm. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.